This is it, folks. It's time to return to Fireball Island. I know it seems like it has been an eternity since we have taken a gander at this fantastically dangerous island, but things have been happening. In fact, you'll notice the island is no longer primer gray. It is volcanic black. How did this happen? What more do we have to do? Let's break it down. First of all, what still has to get done on this island? We have got to build a boat. We have got to paint the island. We have got to build a box. And we have got to make some cards. Will all of those things happen in this episode? I don't think so. We'll see how far we can get. And I want to do, I do want to assure you that we have been busy. So uh, let's just cut to some quick footage on how we got to here. And then we'll jump right back. So fun fact, many, many, many years ago, I wanted to make monsters for movies, and that is what I did. My first job out of college was as a makeup effects artist working for K&B Effects Group. It was magical. I was uh, what was known as a lab monkey, a lab assistant when I got my start, and that just meant I would help everybody else uh, doing a lot of the dirty work, like fiberglass and making molds and pouring urethanes and things like that. But I wanted to do a lot more, and in that regard, uh, Denise got me this airbrush for Christmas. It was the big gift. Uh, I think this was like 1997, I am guessing, after the airbrush, and it paid off. I did not get to paint a lot while I was working at Canby, but I occasionally got to do super cool things. For example, this, the Mars Attacks Martian Spy Ring, I was somehow lucky enough to be able to make and paint these. Um, while at the shop, and occasionally I got to do other fun things uh, with this airbrush. So it did see a lot of action, but then I left LA and the airbrush kind of languished in a box for a long, long time. So since we are going to be doing some painting, I went digging through storage to find a very, very old friend. Behold the Iwata HPC Airbrush. This incredible painting machine is a dual action airbrush, meaning you push down for air control and you pull back to control the flow of paint. It is gravity fed. That means you put the paint in this top cup up here and it is fed into the device via gravity action. Amazing. This thing has been in storage so long, I don't really even remember how to service it, so I printed out this handy-dandy guide. And since we have an airbrush, we need compressed air to run it. I have a big compressor, well, somewhat large compressor, in my shop. It's like a contractor's compressor, and I like to use it to run the airbrush. So how do I connect the shop compressor to my airbrush? I'm glad you asked! I went online and got a ton of stuff. Unfortunately, it involves lots of different connectors, moisture traps, a whole bunch of stuff. There are a couple of people who do uh, YouTube tutorials on how they've connected their compressors. Anyways, long story short, due to the certain pandemic going on, I didn't feel comfortable going to a lot of stores and looking for parts, so I bought everything online, which added a lot to the cost. Could I have bought a small airbrush compressor for the amount of money I spent on connectors? Probably, but then I'd have another compressor to deal with. So anyway, here's where we're at. Hopefully we can stick everything together. So is online shopping convenient? Yes, sure it is, but it can be extremely stressful when you have got to get a lot of tiny little parts that need to fit together and work as one, especially when you're involving metric threads, pipe threads, standard threads, plumbing threads, basically a lot of stuff about threads that I don't really understand completely. Okay, I think, I think, beyond all expectations, I think that I ordered all the right pieces and I have got a airflow going from my compressor to the brush. Let me walk you through it. Okay, so the compressor hose will connect here to this quick connect, which I then had to have like a, what is this? I guess that's a male to male. Then I had to like go a little bigger because unfortunately this moisture trap thing, this is to catch any moisture that comes out of the compressor. It was like a really large diameter opening. So I had to upsize here 
Then I've got a downsize back on the other side to a little section of pipe that will connect to this regulator where I can take the pressure from the compressor way down to airbrush proper compression. Then I have to go from that to another reducer to go to a proper airbrush size. And I have to get this special little thing which goes from pipe thread to the weird threading that Iwata uses, which then goes to this hose, which then I put a quick disconnect on the end of the hose, which will connect to the airbrush. Woo! So now I'm just going to put it all together using some Teflon tape. Moment of truth. I'm going to go for like 20 PSI. This thing has not been connected in 10 years. Oh, but it's not working. Oh, why? Let's just bypass the quick disconnect. It's working. I wonder why the disconnect is no good. Well, at least it's working. So now that we got the airbrush pushing air, I wanted to make a little stand to hold the moisture trap and pressure reducer. So I used my handy dandy shaper tool, which you have seen me use in several other Tiki Technical Tuesdays, to make a rack that would fit onto the French cleats that I have on the studio slash shop wall over here. The moisture trap fit very snugly into the three-piece wooden frame, but I wanted to add some epoxy just to make things extra secure uh, anytime you've got compressed air and compressors, there's a lot of vibration. So I just want to make sure everything is nice and snug. The final thing I did was make a slight change to the inlet and the outlet. I replaced these uh, straight out uh, connections with a 90 degree connection so that the uh, air hose coming in from the compressor and the hose leaving the moisture trap and reducer would just hang down nicely from the unit and not put additional stress onto the inlet and outlet openings. With that said, I think that this airbrush setup is ready to go. So we should move on to... So I knew I needed a boat for the end of the game, and I ordered an HO scale little model railroad boat that I thought would work great, but their HO scale seemed a bit smaller than the characters. So I figured, well, I'll just make a paper mock-up and build a boat from scratch, and ended up with this paper template, which seemed to be the exact same size of the boat that I bought. So I figured, let's just modify the boat that I bought. On a quick side note, Germans are very serious about packaging. I cannot believe how sturdy the box is that this little boat came in. And uh, it was a bit of a challenge to get into. Once I got it out of the box, I could see that it is a beautiful little boat. Lots of amazing details, got some neat cargo in there, but just overall, that canopy is too small to allow our characters to stand in it. And it's just all gonna have to go. Using my handy dandy little modeling pliers, I surgically removed the father and son from the boat and then ended up cutting away the entire canopy. Once it was out, the guy still didn't fit very well, so I ended up removing some more of the cargo and then I had to carefully scrape away the spots where the cargo was to get it nice and smooth. Look at that, it's a boat in the dock, it's fantastic. Okay, so we're back and yes, the island is now volcanic black. Why am I doing this? Okay. So what is with the black coating? Well, I am very new to terrain painting, and I'm going to be honest, I had a ton of anxiety about beginning this whole thing. Uh, part of my waiting to uh, get paint on this was financial. I needed to save up the money I needed to buy all of this. To get my precious Iwata up and running, I got an airbrush stand and filter. I had a cleaning kit, cleaning cleaning solution, a flow improver, which does something, I'm not sure what, uh, the surface primer, which you've already seen in action. We have airbrush thinner, which, well, it, it thins out paint. I also got a big variety of Tamiya spray colors uh, just to do some base colors, and then a big thing of airbrush colors. Whew. And then the other part was psychological. I've been super freaked out about getting paint on this. Like, what if I ruin it? Now, I know, I know, it's just paint. I could paint over it, but I, I, part of the creative process for me sometimes involves a lot of self-doubt, and I'm working through that. And 
I am gotten to the point now where I'm excited about getting paint on this board and I am okay if it doesn't turn out great. Um, and to that effect, I have watched some tutorials and a lot of folks, when they're doing terrain painting, they'll paint everything black and then they'll go back with like a lighter color. And this would represent basically the undercoating of shadow and light that sunlight would put onto the island. So I'm gonna put a undercoat of this black for shadow, a light, uh, this I'm gonna use a very light primer gray for the highlights. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be painting my color. Okay, let's get to it. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Let's get a respirator first. Okay, now that we are safe and secure, let's lay the paint down. Now I'm going with uh, the light gray primer, and this is, like I mentioned earlier, going to be the highlights, like this is the sunlight hitting things. So I'm going in the sunlight direction from the top down. I'm trying to keep kind of a uniform angle, uh, just envisioning, you know, this is how the sun would hit the island from space, I guess. Uh, once I got that down, and I should note that I did run out of paint, and that's why I'm kind of shaking this weird, it, of course, the one time I want to use this primer, I run out of it, ha ha. Uh, then I decided to switch colors. I switched it up, and I went in and did some sand colors, and then I think I might even go in and do some mountain colors. Okay, that is a super good start. I'm I'm really happy. Why did I take so long to paint this thing? I don't know. Anyway, I got the highlight gray put on there. I kind of did run out of it as I was going along, and I've got some nice base coats in for the sandy sections. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more, and I'm gonna get the airbrush put together, and we're gonna start just going bonkers in here and laying in some extra color fun. Ah, yes. Speaking of airbrush colors, here's what I got. The basic color set by Vallejo, Vallejo, I'm not sure how to say it. Anyway, these are colors specifically formulated to run through an airbrush without getting stuck and gumming the things up. And I'm looking for colors not exactly to match the existing game board, but you know, I still want it to look like a tropical island. To kind of get my sea legs back with the airbrush, I figured a safe spot to start would be the path that you follow playing the game. I went with a sandy slash dusty dirty trail color for the base and went to town. The gun is working fantastically and it just really feels good to spray paint again. And these new colors, which I've never used before, are nice and opaque. Uh, they go down really nicely and I have not had any issues with clogging or other things that can ruin your day when airbrushing paint. Oh boy, okay. Well, I had to scramble inside because it hasn't rained for, I don't know, since uh, last winter. Uh, but just because I'm like, hey, maybe this weekend I'll start painting, the rain has returned to Oregon, uh, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Anyway, back inside into the safe, dry um, studio and I'm having a blast. I've laid down my color for the base of the trail. Uh, I'm going to now have to carefully look at the original board because some of these spaces are a different color and it's really critical. So I have a second color picked out uh, for the other color. I am carefully keeping track of all of my colors here on my table paper, uh, just in case I want to go back and fix something later. I'm having a good time. I mean, this is fun. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Uh, I don't know why I had such anxiety about all of this for so long. Artists out there, you'll know what it's like. Anxiety, it can get to you. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm stoked about this. Uh, maybe some lighter colors around here. Then we'll lay some to water. We're gonna, ah, it's just so much to do, so much to do. I'm happy. So I had to carefully reconstruct my original game board that was destroyed when we made the new one. And you'll notice there are dark green squares. Those dark green squares are critical to gameplay and I need to match their positioning perfectly on the new board. So I triple checked and marked a little map that I have here. And then I moved on to the new board and started spraying the darker spaces. I'm sure you've all heard that cliche of measure twice and cut once. Well. I quadruple checked the placement of these against my little map and then I kept looking back over my shoulder on the actual game board that I have on the studio floor to make sure I didn't spray the wrong squares. It was, it's so critical to gameplay that I just, you know, I didn't want to mess this up because it's paint. I mean, I guess I could paint over it technically, but I really didn't want to. Okay, we got color on there. I am getting more comfortable with the airbrush, but I'm also learning it's really challenging to film and airbrush at the same time. Um, yeah, so anyway, 
base colors. I'm just laying down base layers. I'm going to keep layering color and then I do plan on going back with a wash and a dry brush to kind of tighten everything up because one thing about airbrushes is they're kind of soft as you may have noticed. Anyway, I think I'm just going to let the camera sit up here in a bird's eye view and do some time lapse for a while while I lay down some more bases. Some big decisions I have to make is the board's got a lot of vegetation on it. Now, I don't know if I want this to be a barren volcanic island with just sand to dirt to volcano or if I want to paint in some flora. We'll see. Kick the time lapse off. So right off the bat, you can see that I decided, yes, this island does have some green stuff on it. Now, it's not vivid, lush, tropical green. This is still a sun-baked island out in the ocean that has a volcano on it. So the, you know, fauna that you find on this island is not vivid green. In addition, I went in and put in the water, and I think that this made a huge impact on the overall feeling of this being an island. I mean, obviously, you need water to be an island, right? Anyway... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting excited about this board. Look at this thing. The Awada HPC is capable of some unbelievable detail, and I am a complete amateur when it comes to using it, but I am starting to feel more comfortable in remembering what it was like to use this thing 20 plus years ago when I was a fresh, young effects guy. Anyway, uh, I'm working on smolder pits, uh, adding multiple layers of color to make these little kind of, uh, well, I guess they're smolder pits where your character ends up after getting smashed in the face by a fireball. So the weird thing that I was just wrestling with is, you know, there are no rules for painting an island, and I just was kind of figuring it out as I went along. I would add some areas that I thought got too dark, then you just go back and you just go over them with a lighter color. You can see I'm doing that here on the rocks. And I just was trying to find a balance that I liked with the fauna, flora, and how to blend that into the volcanic rocky sections of the island. Overall, was super happy with the results, and it's, you know, it, it is fun to paint, and I have to remember that and not let the anxiety about painting overrule the joy of painting. Oh my god, you guys! We made some... Oh, hang on. I got mask face. We made some progress today. So happy. Oh my goodness. Yes, I haven't touched an airbrush since possibly 1990. 7, 98, let's say 98, um, but man, that was a lot of fun. So it's very soft. It is soft. It's an airbrush, and airbrush is a soft medium. We're going to tighten this thing up with some washes to capture all the detail that's carved into it and some dry brushing to capture all the standing up relief parts, and I think it'll really tighten it all together. Um, yeah, wow. Overall, I'm super stoked with it. Once I put that water on there, it really popped. Um, I'm going to let it stew. I'm going to let it stew, um, come back, look at it tomorrow, and we will hit it again next weekend with some more paint. Um, I want to give it some time to kind of rest in my brain before I put any more paint on it. But man, that is a good, a good return to paint. So much fun. Why did I put it off so long? I don't know. <sighs> It's Saturday, and that means we are going to finish painting Fireball Island. At least, at least I hope we're going to finish painting it today. I don't know. Now, I realized throughout the week that I forgot a very critical portion of Fireball, and that is this guy. I forgot to get to Volcar. Uh, so I want to get Volcar to the same stage as the island currently is. So I stuck Volcar on a stick, so now I feel like Skeletor with his spooky stick. Um... And we're going to get some primer on this, the black primer, and then we're going to do the highlight. We're going to basically do everything that we did to the mountain. We're going to do to Volcar, and then we're going to, once they're all on the same playing field, move forward with paint. Let's get to it. So to get the paint on Volcar, we repeated everything we did on the island, starting with the black base coat, then the highlights of gray primer, and then we just jumped onto the airbrush to do a lot of different passes of grays, browns, and light grays, and even a few touches of green highlights. With Volcar out of the way, it's time to move on to the clear coat, a very exciting stage for me because that means that we are making some progress. Okay, I got the clear coat laid down. It's a uh, flat. I'm using a 
Flat Clear by Tamiya. Uh, the goal is to lock in the paint that we have on there right now, get a nice uniform flat surface because nature isn't glossy as a rule. Uh, and then I'm going to try to do some dry brushes and some washes. It's been a long time since I have attempted a dry brush or a wash, so as always, we will cross the fingers and see what happens, but I I'm hopeful. For the washes, I'm going to try using this Vallejo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, model wash. Uh, these are super watered down paints. I've got a gray and a brown, and I've decided to try using the gray to flow into the carved outlines that I did around each one of the stepping stones on the game board, just to make them pop a little, make them easier to see. And um, yeah, we're just, we're just experimenting here. Never done this before. Fingers are crossed, as always. Yeah. Okay, I've got mixed feelings. I had to take the board out into like some normal sunlight. The light is really weird in this part of the studio to take a look at it. I like that the steps are standing out a little more, but it looks clunky. And I have to like remind myself that this is a board game, not a photorealistic diorama, but still it looks a little weird. Anyway, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna do it all. And then I might go back with the airbrush and just soften it a little because I think it looks a little muddy. Was it right for me to choose the gray over the brown? I don't know, I don't know. But we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna stick with it and see if we can make it better. It took a long time to get the paint into all of these little recesses for all of the stepping stones throughout the game. And a lot of them were in some really awkward positions, especially once we got into the crater. Now I will say I was so-so on the look of this, but as this paint dried, it completely changed color. It did not look so drastic, and all of the things that I saw as my mistakes actually kind of just disappeared. So I, I really need to just relax through this whole process. Once the stepping stones are done, I got an extremely tiny brush and my super binocular close-up eyeballs on and started adding red highlights to the smolder pits, the little sections where your character lives after he gets smashed by a fireball. I had gone in with the rotary tool and put some little divots in there, and I wanted them to all look like hot glowing embers, which needed a coat of red for the starter. Okay, it's time for some real talk. Um, I just wanted to talk super quickly about fear and perfectionism. Um, something that I struggle with a lot as an artist is the idea that everything I do has to be perfect or the perfect ideal that I have in my head before I start a project. I wrestle with this all the time with ceramic glaze because it's a process that you can't really control what happens when it goes in the kiln and I always have to take what I have in my head and say it's okay if what comes out of the kiln doesn't look just like what I have in my head. I'm struggling with that also on this board. I am not good at painting. I haven't done it in a long time. And I feel a lot of fear of failure in doing this project. And maybe this project won't come out as cool as I expect. It's already coming out very differently than I expected. And some of those things I like, some of those things I'm struggling with, but I've got to learn that it's okay to just learn. So anyway, I'm sharing this with you because I just want you to know that I struggle. Maybe if you as an artist, you struggle, you'll feel some camaraderie or you'll understand that all artists uh, can struggle and that's part of the creative process. That being said, we're doing some cool red stuff. I'm gonna do red and then maybe some little highlights for the cinder pits. This tiny brush was awesome for going into the even little itty bittiest divots that I had done with the rotary tool, and I can't wait to go back into these with the yellow for the highlights. Okie dokie, it is Sunday. The weekend is tragically almost over. I've got a little bit more time. I'm gonna do some final touches on paint today. Uh, I want to get some paint on the boat. <sighs> a little bit of dust there. I'm gonna get some paint on the boat. I wanna do a little bit more highlights on the cinder pits and I have got to touch up areas that I had masked off where the LED lights are. After that, we're gonna put another coat of the uh, satin flat finish clear coat to seal things up. And I think the paint might be done at that point, at least done for now. We can always come back and add more paint later, but I think, I mean, I'm happy with it. Oh, so good. 
right off the bat, I wanted to go in and add yellow highlights to those little glowing coals in the cinder pits. Uh, I used the tiny brush again with some yellow paint, and it looks super spiffy. Couldn't be happier with it. I apologize for the focus in this close-up. This is what happens when you were wearing binocular eyes and trying to focus a camera. After the glowing coals were done, it was time to address the LEDs. I went and covered them all with masking tape before doing all the airbrushing so that I wouldn't get any paint on the LEDs themselves. So I went in and carefully removed all of that masking tape and then went in with a detail brush and added a final layer of black paint very carefully so as to not get any paint on the glowing LED light. Once all the cinders were done and the lights were all touched up, it was time for the final clear coat sealant layer. And if you ever want to know why you should wear a respirator while using these things, good lord, just look at this toxic cloud of nastiness coming off of the board. That is why I wear a respirator, folks. All right, that's done. Let's move on to the boat. For the bottom of the little boat, I added a bit of kind of a, like an olive green. I wanted the boat to look a little more utilitarian and a little less fun weekend travel boat because this is a boat for escaping from Fireball Island after all. So it's got to look a little rough and tumble. So anyway, got the paint into the bottom. And then after that, I wanted to weather it up a bit. So I used some of the brown weathering uh, wash material from Vallejo. And uh, yeah, it, it turned out looking pretty spiffy. You guys, it's painted! Oh, it is over! Thank you for bearing with me during my paint panic and watching me struggle to get some color onto this game board. Holy smokes, I am happy with the end results. Is it perfect? No. Do I see little boo-boos? Yes. Is it awesome? Absolutely. So. Let's take a look at our list that we had compiled. We have finished the boat. We have got paint on the board, which means we only have two final steps left. And that would be making a box to, for this whole game to live inside of. And I wanna make some extra special cards for our extra special game. So that is what we're going to tackle on what will be the very final episode of Game Relic's Fireball Island. Can't wait to see you then.